Welcome to our next virtual tour in Lithuania, in the towns, cities and villages of Lithuania. And today we are visiting Mariampole. Mariampole is the seventh large Lithuanian city. It has about 35,000 residents. And the name Mariampole derives from the Marian monks that settled here in the 17th century. And uh, at first it was a little settlement, a village actually, that had different names. Mariampolis, Staropole, and then by the initiative of the counties of the, of the area here, they were united into one settlement and got the name according the order of the Marians, Mariampole. It has different, different versions, Mariampolis, Mariampol, Mariampole, Staropole, and so, so on. We are at a very important place in Mariampole, an important educational institution that existed in Mariampole in beginning from 19th century. And it was the high school of Mariampole. It's called after the name Rigishku Jonas Gymnasia, Gymnasium, high school. This was a cradle for many spiritual and political leaders of Lithuanian nation. Among them were Jonas Basanavichus, the, actually the order of the idea of independent Lithuanian state and the father of Lithuanian independence, we can say, Vincas Kudirka, the order of national anthem of Lithuania. The name of the high school is after Rigishku Jonas. His real name was Jonas Jablonskis. Jonas Jablonskis was the scholar, uh, the creator of the literary Lithuanian language, and he was born in a village near Mariampole, Rigishke, yeah, in 1860 and passed away in 1930. He was a real creator of the modern Lithuanian language. Because at the end of the 19th century, the Tsarist rule had forbidden to use Lithuanian language as a written language and they even had to write in Cyrillic letters. But Jonas Jablonskis developed the Lithuanian language very, very uh, rapidly. His favorite, by the way, his favorite student was Haskell Lemchen, a Jewish guy that he also attributed a lot for the development of the Lithuanian language and created a vocabulary of Lithuanian language and vocabularies, Lithuanian to Russian, Lithuanian to Polish and so on. We are now at the monument for the first meeting of Sayudis, the People's Front, that uh, the movement for the liberation of Lithuania from the Soviet rule that started at the end of Perestroika in the uh, late 80s, 1980s. And the first meeting was here, near this high school of Jonas Jablonskis. We can read that it happened on uh, July 13, 1988. And here we can see the symbol of Lithuanian independence, Gediminas pillars that are part of the Lithuanian coat of arms. The central square of Mariampole. From this place the city started. Once there were four estates around this place and that's why it became a market square. And it was of course overcrowded on the market days or on the fairs. But during the last war, the Second World War, it was bombed, the center of the city was bombed and so was created that free space here. Here on this uh, square today is situated the city hall and the hotel and in 2009 was erected a monument 
this monument in honor of thousand years of Lithuania, because Lithuania for the first time is mentioned in the year 1009. And the sculpture on the top of the monument symbolizes the movement of the Lithuanian nation forward, the horse, and the rider symbolizes the Lithuanians' uh, desire for independence, freedom and new literature. There was a vibrant Jewish community in Mariampoli before the war. And one of the best evidences of the Jewish life here, what we can see today, is the telephone book of 1940 that I have, a unique book. Let's go through some phone numbers that existed here before the war in, in the city of Mariampol. Here we have Isaacovich Yakov, uh, Bauer Yuda, Belskus Leon, Esas Boruch, Esas Dovid. And by the way, my friend, we studied together in Vilna University, Eliyahu Esas, he is the descendant of these Esas brothers. And today he is a famous rabbi in Israel, heading a movement, Or Sameach, in Jerusalem. Another quite famous name, I f what I found here, is Kushner, Avram Kushner. And I can tell you that some 15 years ago I had a tourist he came together with his wife, Harold Kushner, rabbi and the writer that wrote a famous book, When the Bad Things Happen to Good People. And his forefathers come from this city. Now we have here the Jewish high school. We have the Jewish bank here. We have Tiny Svival. We have Shapira Shmuel, we have Kaplan Yosef, we have Zax Zvulon, we have many, many, many Jewish names here. The Jewish community in Mariampol existed in the 18th century, and of course there had to be the prayer houses. On this same place once stood a wooden synagogue, and later on by the initiative of the local rabbi, Chaim Perlmutter, was built a stone synagogue. It was built in 1825, we know already definitely, because at that time there was a prayer in honor of Alexander I, the Russian Tsar. We have a document about it. A bit later was built another building next to the great synagogue. It was Beit Midrash. So, all the complex of the two prayer houses, two Jewish prayer houses, made such a shulhoy, a courtyard of the synagogues. And unfortunately, this building isn't original already, but from the original great synagogue remained this window, a very typical window for the synagogues, and two pilasters, because after the war, when it was partly destroyed, a factory for textile was made here in the Soviet period. And today it has some another factory in Mariampol. This memorial plaque says about the righteous abound among the nations, Jadwiga and Alfonsas Babarskis, that saved a Jewish girl Ruta Bas, the local Jewish girl, during the, war, the World War II. And they were honored by Yad Vashem by this very honorable title, Righteous Among the Nations. Along this street, there was the center, commercial center of Mariampole. And around there were a lot of 
Jewish shops and workshops. And we can say that 80% of the commerce and trade in Mariampol were in the Jewish hands. There were Jewish uh, barbers, there were Jewish uh, uh, restaurants, Jewish coffee shops, Jewish bakeries, Jewish workshops of smith, goldsmith and uh, shoemaker, tailor and so on and so on. The founder of the city of Mariampol, Franciska Butlerenia, the countess, she liked cats very much. And that's why the artists of the city, they decided to arrange in this courtyard such a street gallery of graffiti and of sculptures. And there is a legend that if somebody pets the cat, or three cats, as we see here, yeah, then his wishes will be fulfilled. And you have to believe. And that will really be yours. That? This shul was functioning here from 1870. At first it was a wooden synagogue, but in 1899 was built a stone synagogue by the Russian architect project and it is in the area of the Jewish trade and commerce so it was very very popular here and this uh, building has features of historism and Renaissance and uh, we are lucky that this shul remained after the Second World War. Today there are no Jews in Mariampol, and so this house is used for the cultural needs. And it houses an art gallery of Mariampol. So we are in the third synagogue of Mariampol, Achnasat Orchim. And for our luck, it has the features, typical features of the synagogue. You can see the windows. You can see the women's section, of course, there was not this wall and it was inside there, but the women's section was there. The direction is to the east, yeah? And the ceiling, today it is a wooden ceiling, but it reflects the form it was made once when the synagogue was still active. We are on Castucha Street in Mariampole. And in this, on this street, 1919, was opened the first Hebrew high school in the diaspora. All the subjects in this school were taught in Hebrew language. It was the second in the whole world after the Tel Aviv Gymnasia Herzliya that all the subjects were taught in Hebrew. And this school existed, this high school existed till the Holocaust, till 1941. And since today there are no Jews and this, this, the city was bombed during the war, the building doesn't exist, but we know definitely that it was here in this street. The famous students of this high school were Dvora Baron, the famous poetess in Israel, Abba Geffen, diplomat, the ambassador to Romania, of Israel to Romania, and many, many others. The war against the Soviet Union broke out at 22nd of June 1941. And since Mariampol was oh, very close to the border, it took the Germans only one day to occupy Mariampol. So on June 23, they are already here. At that time, there was a big Jewish community in Mariampol. So at once they start to abuse the Jews, to send them to the forced labor, 
and they concentrated in at the end of July they concentrated them in the ghetto the temporary ghetto that was in the Shulhoi in the courtyard of the synagogues and so they had to work in the streets in the gardens and all other uh, works on uh, September 1st 1941 all of the Jews of Mariampol were brought here by the groups by 100 or 200 people and here were already prepared ditches there were 10 ditches 70 meters long and 3 meters uh, broad and the murders worked very hard they started to shoot the Jews at 10 o'clock in the morning and they finished in the afternoon towards the evening during one day 8,000 Jews from Mariampole and from the neighboring villages and little towns were shot dead here in this place on the bank of Shashupe river and after the war there was a Soviet monument but as usual the Soviets used used inscriptions saying about the Soviet people or innocent victims or peaceful citizens that were murdered in that place after the independence of Lithuania in 1990 the inscription was changed and it is written today in two languages Yiddish and Lithuanian about that terrible massacre that what was made here on September 1st 1941 8,000 Jews, men, women and children and thousands of people of other nationalities. In 1930 there was founded a sugar factory in Mariampol and all these buildings belong to that sugar factory of red bricks, they are original yeah. and Mariampol was uh, supplying all Lithuania with sugar. So, 80 years later, in 2011, was erected here a monument for sugar beet, a raw material for sugar. And that's it, a very nice monument that uh, used to feed a lot of people in Lithuania. Welcome to Mariampole! The building of the railway station of Mariampole was designed in 1920s and it was opened in 1924 when a line from Mariampole to Kazlu Ruda and Shestoke Shestoke it is already a little town on the border with Poland it means the way to Europe, to Western Europe. So this railway station building was opened and it is built in a style modern, modern, and it's one of the most decorated buildings in Lithuania in this style. Here at the railway station of Mariampol you can arrive by the train and during your visit in Lithuania you can see not only the big cities but also the smaller ones or the villages with their architecture, with their history, with their Jewish history, with their shops and restaurants and here in Mariampol, for example, you can spend uh, really a day or even more, yeah? And there is what to do. It's a nice city. It's a city of culture, of uh, interest. And uh, we welcome you here in the city. Put your likes on our video. 
and we wish you good luck and to visit our next video episodes.